60 minutes rewind. Iron Dome is a technological marvel, a cutting edge weapon of war that even some pacifists might come to love. Instead of killing people, Iron Dome saves them by intercepting rockets loaded with explosives before they can land on innocent civilians. And it does all this in less time than we've just spent explaining it. The system was developed by Israel with hundreds of millions of dollars of support from U.S. taxpayers. It's been called a game changer that might relieve military pressure on Israel and make it easier to achieve peace in the Middle East. And that was something we decided we had to see for ourselves. Over the past 11 years, more than 15,000 rockets and mortars have been fired at Israel by Hezbollah in Lebanon and by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Until recently, the only thing Israeli civilians could do was run for cover. But in the latest round of fighting between Israel and Hamas late last year, some people stopped running and tried to get some good pictures, because this time, when Hamas fired rockets from Gaza at Israeli cities, Iron Dome fired missiles to intercept them in the sky before they could do any damage on the ground. You're looking at an Iron Dome missile on its way. You can't see the Hamas rocket it's going after, but watch how the missile will adjust its course to get close to the Hamas rocket and blow it up. At night, the images of Iron Dome are even more spectacular. This video was taken at a wedding in southern Israel. Now, squadrons of Iron Dome missiles could be seen hunting salvos of Hamas rockets. The wedding music played on, despite the battle above. Do you think that people in Tel Aviv and Eshkelon feel safer today than they did six months ago? But by far. Ehud Barak is a legendary Israeli commander and general and Israel's defense minister. We interviewed him just before Israel's recent elections. Now people are not running to shelter so much, they're staying in their cafes. No, I, I don't think so. Uh, probably some, probably in Tel Aviv, where no rocket actually landed, but there is less anxiety deep in their, in, in their mind because, after all, Everyone knows the statistics that uh, basically, most probably, the incoming rocket will be intercepted. It really looked like Israel was in for it in November when Israeli leaders, fed up with rocket attacks from Gaza, assassinated Hamas's military commander. Hamas and Islamic Jihad responded by firing more than 1,500 rockets at Israel. Israeli Air Force says. Iron Dome destroyed 85% of the rockets headed towards Israeli towns and cities. There's no way to independently confirm that figure, but the fact that Iron Dome could shoot down a short-range rocket traveling between 500 and 1,000 miles per hour is remarkable in itself. It's like a bullet shooting down another bullet, which is why when Iron Dome was just a concept on a drawing board several years ago, many Israeli strategists didn't think it could be done. It sounded extremely dramatic to, to make uh, two bodies uh, meet together when uh, both of the, the, the relative velocities are uh, immense. We understand that at the beginning even the Israeli Air Force was against it. Yeah, there, there were many, many corners of resistance because people didn't see it as uh, natural. To see how Iron Dome works, we paid a visit to one of Israel's five operational batteries. Each battery has its own radar, command and control center, and launchers that fire the intercepting missiles. The equipment's worth about $50 million. It's sitting in a potato field, manned by what appear to be college kids. <laughs> Shaiko Gainsky is the battery commander. How old are most of you soldiers? Between 18 to 21 years Pretty old. young. Yes, they are young. And you're the commander? I'm the commander. I'm 32. I'm a little old. You're 32? Yeah. So you're the old man here? Yes, I'm the old man. When Hamas launches a rocket, Iron Dome's radar detects it, and his computers calculate where it will land. If it's headed for an empty field, Iron Dome won't waste an interceptor on it. But if it's going towards a populated area, 
the system will figure out the best place to intercept the rocket so that the falling shrapnel won't do any harm. Iron Dome will then ask one of those kids for permission to fire. So you've got three to five seconds to decide yes, whether or not to intercept it. it and you have to do something. The soldier has to do something. It will not be automatic. No, no, no. It's not automatic. The soldiers are intercepting the rockets. They have to make the decisions. This is the Iron Dome interceptor. Once it's launched, it has a mind of its own. And this is the mind right here, the brains. It guides the missile very close to the enemy rocket and explodes blowing the rocket out of the sky and keeping it far away from an Israeli town. A rocket fired from the Gaza Strip will take just 7 to 15 seconds to land in the Israeli town of Sterut. The Israelis say Iron Dome has knocked down many of those rockets. The rocket scientists who invented Iron Dome can't, for security reasons, show their faces on camera. But Didi Yari, the CEO of Rafael, the lead manufacturer of the system, is under no such restriction. And these are the batteries inside the truck. These are the batteries. As he showed us what the inside of an Iron Dome command center looks like, he told us more fire was directed at southern Israel during the eight-day battle in November than during all of Israel's previous wars. People have called the development of the Iron Dome a game changer. Does that mean anything? It does, definitely. You know, people go to work, harbors are working, cars are moving, trains are moving, nothing stops. And still you have circumstances where in the past you would consider as full war. Israel was ready for full war. 75,000 soldiers and hundreds of armored vehicles were called up ready for an invasion of Gaza. It didn't happen. Is it because of Iron Dome that the army didn't have to invade Gaza? By all means. Without Iron Dome, we'll, we'll, we, we were inside Gaza, you know, after two days. And the casualties on both sides would have been higher. Yeah. While Iron Dome worked well against Hamas's rockets, no one knows how it would do in the north against Hezbollah's larger, more sophisticated arsenal. And there's expense. Each Iron Dome interceptor is believed to cost more than $75,000. A Hamas rocket can be built for as little as 500. What if the next time around Hamas fires 100 at once or 500 and half of them are dummies? I don't are, want to go into extremely kind of, uh, uh, extreme uh, kind of uh, scenarios, but basically there was a question mark that was raised by critics. The outcome that you are Launching something might cost uh, fifty or hundred thousand dollars against something that cost cost uh, five hundred or five thousand dollars, and I say uh, that's not the right way to look into it. Basically, there is a high price that I put on our, on our capacity to run normal life, to let the people live as normally as possible, to let uh, the economy uh, flourish and move forward. Barack argues that if Iron Dome makes Israelis feel more secure, less threatened they'll be more willing to make peace with the Palestinians. You won't find many Palestinians who agree. Before the Iron Dome, they felt no pressure to make any concessions. After the Iron Dome, they will feel the pressure to, 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 to make concessions. Of course not. Hussam Zumlaid is a PLO diplomat and a professor at Brzeit University. What's this demonstration here? As we walked with them through the streets of Ramallah on the West Bank, a group of protesters marched right past us. Certainly it will not be the Iron Dome. <laughs> right. This will not be the arena of security. Uh, it might be about prisoners. Most likely it's about prisoners. It was about prisoners, Palestinians arrested by the Israelis. People here have many complaints about their political and economic situation. But unlike Hamas in Gaza, the Palestinian Authority on the West Bank hasn't fired any rockets at Israel and has been praised by Israeli officials for maintaining law and order. But a more peaceful situation on the West Bank hasn't led to renewed peace talks, and each side blames the other for the gridlock. The story will continue after this.
Life is very normal in Tel Aviv. P people are jogging on the beaches of Tel Aviv. There is a wall that separates them from whatever happening there. It doesn't concern them whatsoever. And this is the dynamics we are faced with. The reality is, until the Israeli society feels some sort of a sense of crisis and sense of an urgency, we will go nowhere. Surely you're not suggesting that it would be better if rockets fell on Tel Aviv, or are you? Absolutely not. I think the U.S. should tell them that our money comes with our advice. If you take our money, you better take our advice. For the last 25 years, you have been taking only our money and putting our advice aside. The $270 million the U.S. has provided Israel to help build Iron Dome is in addition to the $3 billion Israel gets annually from the U.S. in military aid. Palestinians complain that while all this U.S. support is being given to Israel, the Israeli government has repeatedly defied U.S. policy and approved the construction of new settlement blocks in the West Bank. The Americans have already given $270 million. M more than this, I believe, along the years, yeah. And they're promising, just for Iron Dome, another $660 million. Yeah, 680 probably 211 might be given in the coming fiscal year. And while the Americans are helping you so much in your defense, Israel goes on building settlements, which is exactly what the Americans don't want. How does that work when you're asking America for help and doing exactly what the Americans don't want you to do? You know, Bob, I, I prefer not to answer this question right now. You know, we are in the height of the election period. I basically think that uh, the relationship, especially between our intelligence communities and our defense establishment, is extreme, are extremely close. You mean between the Israeli and the Americans? Yeah, extremely close. And, of course, we have certain differences. But how does it work? I mean, right now, Israel has just announced the building of a gigantic settlement project. This is at the same time that the Americans are providing the money for Israel's most important defense you know, system. We, we are highly grateful to the administration, to American people as a whole, for this support. Uh, I, I don't think that it's relevant to the issue of Iron Dome. Israelis argue that America's commitment to their security must be kept separate from political disagreements between the U.S. and Israel. Six Israelis were killed in this latest battle with Hamas. The U.N. says more than 100 Palestinians perished as the Israeli Air Force and Navy pummeled targets in Gaza. But Hamas never surrendered. Despite Iron Dome, it kept firing rockets. And after a ceasefire was negotiated, Hamas's long exiled leader made a triumphant visit to Gaza, claiming victory. So who won? Depends who you ask. The loser, again, is any prospect of peace. And no machine, however brilliantly designed, can fix that.